So today I'm talking filtration. I'm going to go through all the principles of, of koi, pond and pond in general filtration. Uh, I'm going to explain in simple terms sort of three key stages to filtration that you, you should know about and you should understand. This will help you if you're building a filter for example for a new pond, if you're choosing the correct filter for a pond or even if you've got a filter up and running already on, a, on an existing pond, this will, to, if you understand these, these principles it will help you to sort of operate it optimally and to, to optimize it in terms of flows, cleaning regimes etc. So all really good useful information no matter where you are on the, uh, on the hobby ladder if you like. Firstly I'm going to talk about mechanical filtration so I'm going to explain exactly what that is and, and generally how you go about achieving it. I'm going to go on and talk about biological filtration next and again in simple terms explain what it is and, and how you go about doing it. And then thirdly, another form of filtration that's often overlooked, not talked about quite so much. Um, this is more, it's not so much a matter of life and death, like for example biological filtration is. It's more for your fish's health and well-being, uh, the general immune system, the, the quality of life if you like, the, the, the difference between surviving and flourishing. So I'll go on and talk about that uh, thirdly. Okay, so firstly, mechanical filtration. What exactly is mechanical filtration? It's essentially concerned with the removal of everything solid that ends up in your pond. So, fish waste is the obvious one, number twos. Leaves, plants, dust, insects, anything like that that ends up in your pond. Uneaten food, anything at all, that solid material that finds its way into your pond that, that we need to get out. That is what mechanical filtration is all about. So, I'm going to try and demonstrate in very, as I say, very simple terms. So, uh, how much do I need? A little bit more. We've got some pond water. I've got, of all things, some dry dog food. So this represents all the solid material that that you'll find in your pond. So hopefully you can see that floating around in our pond water. So mechanical filtration. Basically in order to get that waste out of that water firstly we need to deliver it to a filter system and that is key and I'll come back to that. And then essentially what we do is pass the water containing the solid waste through something that has lots of holes in. And the idea being the water is able to pass through the holes and the solid material is collected as it's too big to pass through the holes. Okay so basically you take your pond water, you pump it through your mechanical filter and all being well your filter catches the solid material there. Now I've done it this way for a reason. With where most filters are concerned that is the situation you have. Essentially what we've done is we've collected it but it's still in the water so hopefully you can see that those biscuits are still sat in the water. Nothing's changed as far as your car is concerned so effectively your mechanical filter rounds up that waste collects it into a single spot but if you can imagine your, your filter water is being constantly pumped through that waste so it's not actually done anything. It's, it's the equivalent of collecting it all together in a pile in the corner of your pond. It's all there, it's collected up, but it's still in the water. So your fish are still swimming around in that waste. As far as they're concerned, absolutely nothing has changed. And this is where the, the most important part of mechanical filtration, I would argue, comes in. Uh, and that's us. Essentially, we need to remove that waste from the water and we do that by cleaning the filter, flushing the mechanical section of the filter out and all that filter waste is flushed away to waste to drain uh, whatever it is you do with it but that only happens when we as koi keepers clean flush our filter out until we do that that waste is still sat in the water and as I say as far as the fish are concerned nothing's changed so important things then in mechanical filtration the size of the holes is important because obviously 
the smaller the holes, the smaller the bits that it will collect. With that comes a trade-off in that the smaller the holes, the quicker they'll block up. And also the more back pressure you'll put on your pump and the more, redu more you'll reduce the flow. So there's a trade-off. The ease with which you can clean your filter, to me that is the number one thing when choosing a filter. I have nothing against the performance of the old fashioned linear multi bays. They can perform very, very well. What I don't like though is the fact that to clean them, you've got to get your hands dirty, you get wet, you've got to take things out, filter brushes, for example, floss, filter floss, matting, jack mat. Um, got to check them out, you've got to clean them, get dirty. It's an onerous task, takes a lot of time, put them back together. And as such, with, a, with those kind of filters, they, they, they don't tend to get done very often, maybe once a week, uh, if you're lucky. But consider, if you would, for... You clean that filter on Sunday morning. By Sunday afternoon, your car you've all crapped in it again in the water. Kind of back to where you are, swimming around, living in that waste until the following Monday. And it's a very brief period of time only that, that you call you f f f swimming around in fresh water, fresh clean water. So yeah, choose your filter, pay, pay close attention to how easy it is to flush out. I have an easy pod, essentially pods Nexus are, are multi-bay filters, but rather than being a, a big vortex and then bays one, one after the other, uh, what EA did was took these subsequent bays and fitted them inside the big vortex to get the footprint down. Still a multi-bay filter, much smaller footprint. And cleaning those is a case of opening and closing valves. Takes probably 10 minutes. You don't get wet, you don't get dirty. And therefore it, it tends to get done more often. I flush my pod and tempest every day because it takes me five minutes at the most. Quite enjoy doing it. Turn a couple of valves, done. So do, yeah, think about that when you're choosing a filter or if you're building your own, very important to, to design in that ability to clean it very quickly and very easily. Look how much water you lose as well is another consideration in this day and age where we're, we're all trying to save water. Less important, but something to think about. So that's mechanical filtration. It is very simple. One, one big thing I did touch on and this will sound obvious, if you don't put the waste into that filter, it will never take it out. The best mechanical filter in the world won't take those waste particles out of your water if you don't put them in there. And that sounds obvious, but a lot of people will set up a filter and they've got fines or they've got waste sat on the bottom and very quickly they blame the filter. The majority of cases, a koi pond specific purpose-built filter will do what it's supposed to do. In the majority of cases, it, it's the whole, the system as a whole is failing rather than the filter. By that I mean, you need circulation, you need water movement, you need to get that waste into that filter in order for it to take it out. And that whole system is, is, is critical. The mechanical filter is, as I say, is just one tiny part of that. Uh, the whole system, including us as Kai Keepers, is, you know, the whole picture you need to consider rather than just that individual element. Okay, the second part of, of the filtration process that I'm going to talk about is biological filtration. Biological filtration um, doesn't necessarily need to be any more complicated. It, it is pretty simple and pretty straightforward, although it, people do often overcomplicate it. Kai produce ammonia. Um, that ammonia they produce as a result of the... The, the digestion, the processing of the food we give them. They process that food, they take the nutrients out, they, they get their energy from it. What's left over, a lot of, a lot of ammonia, which is excreted via predominantly gills, some, some in your own, into the pond water. Very quickly, the level of ammonia will build up, if left unchecked to a level where it becomes toxic to your koi and, and ultimately results in fatalities. We don't get this situation in the wild simply because of volume. The ponds we have are tiny, even 20, 30, 50,000, what we consider a big gallon, uh, a big koi pond is, is tiny in, in relation, in comparison to what, what 
the, the bodies of water in the wild that fish live in. And so that dilution, that natural processing doesn't occur. And so ammonia builds up and as I say, ultimately very quickly, it can become toxic and kill your koi. As such, biological filtration is, is what we use to remove that ammonia. And the way it works is this, we, the, we need to encourage bacteria to grow. The bacteria we need to encourage are a particular strain of bacteria that consume ammonia. And what we need to do basically in the filter system, we need to build houses essentially. So we build houses for the bacteria to live. Uh, and that, that takes the form of biological media, K1, whatever it may be, lots of different medias available. But essentially we're, we're providing houses. And then as the fish produce the ammonia, if we build them, they'll come. The bacteria move into the houses that we've provided and the family, they grow um, and the colony of bacteria grows to a size, millions of bacteria, sufficiently big to consume the ammonia that your koi are producing on a daily basis. So the colony will grow to the size basically of the food source, which is the ammonia. You can encourage that by adding bacteria artificially, or you can be patient and wait for nature to take its course. Either way, the goal is colonize this media, get the, get the bacteria to move into the houses that we've built, and for them to continuously consume the ammonia that the koi are producing so it can't build up to toxic levels. And that's biological filtration, essentially. It is pretty simple and straightforward. One slight twist, the guys that eat the ammonia, consume the ammonia, a byproduct of their digest, their processing of the ammonia is nitrite, which is also toxic to koi if it builds up to sufficient levels. As such, nothing more complicated than simply needing a second colony of bacteria. And again, we need to provide the homes for them to move into. Second colony of bacteria to grow to the size of the nitrite supply and to consume the nitrite. And then thankfully, the byproduct of that process of consuming the nitrite is nitrate. And that, that it's very difficult to build up to levels where nitrate becomes toxic. Essentially, as far as biological filtration is concerned, the stage we're at now, we don't need to worry about nitrate, but I will come on to that when I talk about the third area of filtration in a moment. So a couple of, two or three points of, of note on the biological filtration. One is the colonies that we, we um, encourage are living things, living, breathing organisms. We need to look after them. We need to nurture them. We need to look after them as best we can. They are vital to the survival of our koi and, and to the koi's uh, health and well-being. So consider, you know, keep in mind that that's what they are, a living, breathing thing. Secondly, they do better, they're more efficient with clean water. Um, hence, the mechanical filtration will always come first to take out the waste, the, the solid waste. And then you feed the mechanically clean water to the biological colony and they are more efficient and they can easier process the, the, the ammonia and subsequently nitrite when the water is free of, of organic waste. So that's two things. Another thing to, to consider is this both mechanical and biological filtration and not a one hit, a one shot process. So you put water in, it goes through mechanical sieving if you like, straining, goes through the biological media, it's passed through, and as it goes through, the bacteria that come into contact with the water, with the ammonia molecules, take out the ammonia. It comes out the other end, it will still contain solid material and ammonia and nitrite after one pass through. So consider it a continuous process. That water, any individual water molecule, is continually going round the system, continually going through. Next time, the holes in your sieve may have blocked up a little, so the, the holes are smaller, so they can catch uh, a little particle that was missed the first time. The ammonia concentration has, has come down a little, and so the next time comes down a little bit more, and again a little bit more until it, it gets to as close to zero as we can get it. So yeah, consider, just keep in mind, it's a continuous process. It's not a one hit process. It needs to be continually going. And 
again this is where circulation water movement uh, all the mixing of those of the water and the ammonia and the nitrate and the waste is vital in order for this continuous process to function at its best at its most efficient okay so the third area the third principle of filtration which I touched on earlier consider if you will all the all that we're taking out with a, a, a standard mechanical and biological filter system we're taking out all the lumps physical lumps of waste that are in there the, the solid pieces gone we're taking out the ammonia gone we're creating nitrate in the process but we're taking that out so that's gone but that's it that's all we're taking out there, there's a lot of other things in there um, that neither mechanical or biological filtration will remove so for example it's a long list but a few examples urine i touched on um koi urinate in the water that they live in regularly solid waste that is how can we put this without being yeah is less solid um shall we say also waste that initially is solid goes through a pump impeller gets mashed up into tiny particles ultimately a lot of that can and does become dissolved sufficiently dissolved that your mechanical filtration won't take it out it's very very small nitrate i touched on earlier we're constantly generating nitrate phosphate also also both of those can be present in your tap water supply well those essentially are food for algae and weed etc they will will cause those things to proliferate whilst at low levels they won't cause problems to your koi what they will do is they'll cause in uh, let's say appetite suppression let's say anything at all that builds up in there that isn't natural to the fish that they haven't evolved in any alien chemicals and, and substances such as that will ultimately cause suppression will cause a drop off in well-being um, in in happiness if you like if you want to from, from want of a better way of putting it another one is heavy metals uh, tap water supplies can contain some heavy metals they ultimately aren't removed so can build up rain contains things often uh, that, that can end up in your pond water and can build up chloramines if you have small levels of chloramines in your supply or left unchecked can build up so all these things are sort of dissolved if you like in the water not removed by mechanical filtration not removed by biological filtration and the big one i would say the big one that i've not yet mentioned is pheromones so koi emit pheromones they they are i don't i don't want to get into i don't want to get too complicated i want to keep it simple but hormones uh, are kind of chemical signals produced internally that they, they send signals and triggers to internal organs and body parts and things so that's a hormone a pheromone is kind of the external equivalent of a hormone so pheromones are emitted and, and fish in the wild will emit pheromones into the water and it's a basically it's to communicate with other koi um, and, and there's a lot of studies on this i'm not going to go into it but well koi and fish kept in in such massively overstocked and they are we are overstocked i've got six six or seven koi in here in a tiny pond it's too much it, they're overstocked these koi will as a result nature's way of keeping the numbers down koi will emit pheromones that inhibit immune system so all those koi swimming around in the and they're cramped in this little pond and continually emitting pheromones into the water and that's nature's way of keeping the numbers down because that is inhibiting the immune system of the other koi you don't see it and as i say they're not all going to drop dead overnight but it's happening stocking density is so important there there's again scientific studies out there look them up have a read it's a proven fact that as you increase the number of koi in a pond then the 
immune system of that chi decreases and this again as I say is related to pheromones this is why it's so important to get the correct stocking levels as well and why you 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 know the more chi you have in a small volume like this the more problems you will get so immune system is compromised I've already mentioned appetite many of those things will suppress appetite but the biggie is it the biggie I don't know for me the general well-being is is compromised by those things dissolved in that water if you like no, the, the simplest way to put it is your fish they can't tell you but they're less happy than if those things weren't there to sort of try and summarize it in one one sentence it's the difference between surviving and flourishing ultimately if we do nothing about all the things dissolved in the water chances are your koi will survive albeit their immune systems will be compromised so you will be more susceptible to parasites ail ailments etc so indirectly there is an impact but ultimately leave them in your koi survive get them out your koi will flourish so the biggie how do we get them out the third principle then we had one was mechanical filtration two was biological filtration three i'm going to call dilution there is no other way really to get those things out other than dilution water changes take out the water containing the nitrate the urine the pheromones uh, the met heavy metals the chloramines take that water out throw it away replace it with clean fresh water that doesn't contain those things dilution ultimately that's the only way and this is why it's vitally important for you, if you want your curry to flourish if you want to optimize the development the growth the happiness you need to change water the best way absolutely without a doubt the best way to change water is to constantly trickle in some water decide how much you want to change say 20 percent 30 percent of your pond volume every week divide it up work out a figure for liters per hour that you need to trickle in set up a trickle of fresh water going in do it down i add mine downstream of my filter um, put it in have some form of overflow mine's in my filter system i don't want anything unsightly on the pond on my filter system i have an overflow i've got videos on it if you want to check them out the water trickles in fresh from the tap into my return it goes through the pond it's all mixed and then ultimately it overflows to waste obviously the same volume so the the water level is maintained oh, I need to clean my window um, that's absolutely the best way you don't get big influxes of chlorine if you if uh, or chloramines and metals you don't get a big chilling effect it's a constant absolutely as I always say with everything in koi keeping consistency is the key um, whatever you do do it exactly the same consistently day in day out and your koi will benefit because we're trying to create this system will be any slight changes throws it out sets you back absolutely consistency is the biggie so yeah number three is dilution as i say often overlooked you can get away with overlooking it but ultimately if you want to have optimum quality of life for your fish optimum growth uh, health then you you need to dilute all these these um, toxins and chemicals that are, are building up constantly in your pond hopefully that's been useful to you if you're as enthusiastic about koi as i am then do consider subscribing it does every every little helps hit the notification icon so you don't miss future videos got got some stuff coming up um, got a video on on air and ultimately oxygen uh, several others in the pipeline do feel free to share the video but as i say hopefully it's been useful to you thank you for watching